the good news to the poor, to heal the broken hearted. My brothers and sisters, today we rejoice as we celebrate the external solemnity of our patron saint, Saint Vincent de Paul. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Being the parish mass, we pray for our parishioner and for our benefactors too. O God, who for the relief of the poor and the formation of the clergy, and thou the priest St. Vincent de Paul with apostolic virtue, grant we pray that a fire with that same spirit we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord God says this, I am going to look after my flock myself and keep them all of it in view. As a shepherd keeps all his flock in view when he stands up in the middle of his scattered sheep, so shall I keep my sheep in view. I shall rescue them from wherever they have been scattered during the mist of darkness. I shall bring them out of the countries where they are, I shall gather them together from foreign countries and bring them back to their own land. I shall pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in every inhabited place in the land. 
I shall feed them in good pasturage. The high mountains of Israel will be their grazing grounds. There they will rest in good grazing grounds. They will browse in rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will pasture my sheep. I myself will show them where to rest. Is this the Lord who speaks? I shall look for the lost one, bring back the stray, bandage the wounded, and make the weak strong. I shall watch over the fat and healthy. I shall be a true shepherd to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response of Psalm Happy the man who fears the Lord. Happy the man who fears the Lord, who takes delight in his commands. His sons will be powerful on earth. The children of the upright are blessed. Happy the man who fears the Lord. Riches and wealth are in his house. His justice stands firm forever. He is a light in the darkness for the upright. He is generous, merciful, and just. The good man takes pity and lends. He conducts his affairs with honor. The just man will never waver. He will be remembered forever. He has no fears of evil news. With a firm heart, he trusts in the Lord. With a steadfast heart, he will not fear. He will see the downfall of his foes. Open-handed, he gives to the poor. His justice stands firm forever. His head will be raised in glory. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Take yourself, brothers, at the time when you were called. How many of you were wise in the ordinary sense of the word? How many were influential people or came from noble families? No. It was to shame the wise that God chose what is foolish by human reckoning and to shame what is strong that he chose what is weak by human reckoning. Those whom the world thinks common and contemptible are the ones that God has chosen. Those who are nothing at all to show up those who are everything. The human race has nothing to boast about to God, but you, God has made members of Christ Jesus and by God's doing, he has become our wisdom and our virtue and our holiness and our freedom. As scripture says, if anyone wants to boast, let him boast about the Lord. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my own sheep, and my own know me. Alleluia.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus made a tour through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing all kinds of diseases and sickness. And when he saw the crowd, he felt sorry for them, because they were harassed and dejected, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, in the first reading, because the good Lord God fed out with the people in Israel, uh, the religious leaders. And he tell Ezekiel to tell the people, now I will take care of my sheep myself. So in the gospel we have God who became man, fully God, fully man, walking and doing his work. So we see Jesus walking around making a pastoral visitation and ministering to the people, healing the sick, casting out devils and so forth, and proclaiming the gospel. And this Jesus, the good shepherd, saw the crowd and he felt sorry for them because they were like sheep without shepherd. They were harassed and dejected do not know what to do, blur, in the society. So Jesus called his disciples and told them, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So he asked them to ask the Lord of the harvest, to so send laborers to his harvest. So we have today's theme, vocation to the priesthood. It's good as a patronal feast day, we reflect on the priesthood. And today, I talk so much, not so much about religious priests, but diocesan priests. Before Vatican II, there are two types of priests according to alphabetical order. First is our, our comforts, huh? religious, regular, regular priests, as secular priests. After Vatican II, the regular priest becomes religious priest, and the secular priest becomes diocesan priest. And many people thought that the diocesan priest uh, got no class, you know, uh, walk behind. No, actually, diocesan priests have precedence over the religious priest. In the ordination, let's say that you have a group of, can, like the 14th of September in the cathedral. Who is named first? The assistant deacon, and the deacon was ordained later, only a few weeks, one week later, you know, than the Carmelite deacon. Uh, Carmelite deacon was last year. So they were first say, deacon so and so ordained for the archdiocese of Singapore. So he is ordained for Singapore. The purpose is Singapore. The Carmelite, the deacon from the Carmelite for the Order of the discount Kamalai. So he is ordained for his community, for his order. You see. So that is then after that, the CDD, the congregation of the Lord's works. I don't know what is this CD stand for. Lah, huh? So in the gospel, they were harassed and dejected because they were blur. And just as in the time of Jesus, where people were blur, do not know what is right, what is wrong, or maybe forget, so is now. Now there are so many issues, and then sometimes people blur. Sometimes people are scared, become blur. Uh, sometimes priests and bishops become blur because they dare not to say. Okay? So we need pastor 
shepherd to tell us what is right, what is wrong. Gray shade is very little, you see. Many things is what is right, what is wrong. We need people to tell us. For example, I tried to get it from the computer but cannot because I didn't pay for the, you know, subscription. You pay subscription that you can print. This priest is very good. He tells the parents in America, what you did have not done is, is wrong because you have not properly raised up your children. Yes, you tell your children who may have same-sex attraction. Yes, I love you, my son, my daughter. But when it comes to the moral issue, there is right and there is wrong. What you did is not right. But you are still my son, I still love you. But if you want to get married, sorry, I can't attend. And I will not uh, visit your so-called home. So he told the parents this. He says, son, daughter, marry outside the church. You have to tell them, you are my son, you are my daughter, but if you don't marry in the church, I cannot attend your wedding because my presence there will show that I support what you are doing. So you have to make a stand so that they know. The problem is that nowadays, as this priest say, my precious child, you know, my precious child, because I love him, I love her, so I should do what they tell me to do. So we today, as, as, as ever, need to be told again, to be reminded again, what God wants us to know through his shepherd. Unlike Jesus Christ, who can touch everyone, he is God incarnate, fully God, fully man. We human beings, his priests, cannot touch everybody. I cannot touch everybody. I may touch this person that that person don't like me. Well, so that mind I give to Father JJ. <laughs> you see. So we need many people. Huh? So we need various types of personality, characters, and talents to reach out to people. People who are intelligent, people who are not so intelligent, the young priests and the old priests. But important things, as the second reading tells us, that God chose what is foolish by, by humans' reckoning to show glory of God. It means what? All are called smart and not so smart. Important thing is humility. When we put ourselves at God's service and not try to do what we think should be done, but what God wants us to do, then we will see the glory of God works through us because it is not our work of our intelligence. So humility. So my brothers and sisters, that is why we have to pray for our Archbishop, who is the main person in taking care of the formation of priests. We have to pray for the rector of the major seminary, because he's the one who is in charge. And the formators, those priests who are chosen to be formators, we have to pray for them that they may be able to be generous and know what God wants them to do, how God wants them, the people that God sends to them. They have to make sure to take care of them. Huh? Anyone that enters the seminary is not just suka suka going because some or others God sent them. So they have a responsibility before God to train them. According to the good shepherd, the heart of the good shepherd, not according to their hearts, huh? according to the hearts of the good shepherd, as the late Archbishop Gregory Young of holy memory, I think he's a really holy bishop, he always stressed that, be a priest according to the heart of the good shepherd and not be a priest according to your mother, your father, your uncle, no, huh? good shepherd. 
We need to pray for the generosity of parents. When we ask for vocation, the family, the mother, father will turn to the next family. And then the next family will turn to the next one. What about your family? Pray to God in humility that it is your choice, God's choice. Please choose one from my family to serve you. And the next one is the generosity of the candidates. You see. Because I know there are people who, who I was a seminary, I heard, you know, oh, they told me this guy yeah, want to join seminary. I said, oh, okay, okay, good, good, good. But he always said he want to join, he always said he want to join, but never join. So the generosity is what? To make the first step and enter into the seminary. So generosity. And so my brothers and sisters, today is a nice time to pray because our patron saint, St. Saint Vincent de Paul, is what? Besides being the patron saint for all charity, proclaimed by Pope Leo XIII, he is also priest good for the formation of clergy. Remember the opening prayer? Ah, we pray to St. Vincent de Paul that to help this Archdiocese of Singapore ah, to have priests and to have priests according to the heart of the Good Shepherd. It is generosity ah, and openness of the Archbishop Gregory Young that I become a priest. Ah, if you be very fussy, I won't be. I'm not that smart ah, ah, because of his openness, his trust in God, you see. And remember, we are all, the priests are all not getting young. All those ordained, newly ordained, you look at the face. Are they very young? No one, am I right? A few more, 10 years, 15 million, I'll allow coke, coke already. I'll tell you what, am I right? Soon, the, the steps here will be removed and we will stand on the ground floor. Why? Both for the JJ and myself, we are getting old. Huh? We got problem lifting up our leg. When he comes back, the time when he comes back, I don't think he got the, got the strength to lift up his leg to go up. So pray for vocation. Let us stand, I believe, in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In confidence, we place our needs before our Heavenly Father, who is always generous, merciful, and just. For the Universal Church, that the faithful will respond to the call to be shepherds of the people and laborers in the Lord's vineyard. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For world leaders and those in public authority, 
that they will strive to serve the people with God's wisdom, virtue, and holiness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who are lost or have gone astray, the wounded and the weak, that they will recognize the presence of God in their lives and find strength to carry on. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. On this feast day of our patron saint, Vincent de Paul, we pray for our parish, that we may remain strong during these difficult times, and that we will all be able to come together for Mass soon without any restriction. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our parishioners who have gone before us, that they may find rest in the peace of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heavenly Father, we place all our prayers and needs in your hands, asking you to nourish and strengthen us to do your will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. You become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. You become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who enables St. Vincent to imitate what he celebrated in the divine mystery, Granted by the power of this sacrifice, we too may be transformed into an oblation acceptable to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, 
For as on the festival of St. Vincent de Paul, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and enter willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciple, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men. For he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things.
Let us pray. Renew by this heavenly sacrament, O Lord, we implore, that just as we are prompted by St. Vincent's example to imitate your Son in his preaching of the gospel to the poor, so too we may be sustained by his prayer to Christ our Lord. Let us kneel. All together, O blessed Saint Vincent, Father of the poor and Apostle of charity, may we follow your example and do good works among those whom society has abandoned, enslaved or forgotten. Inspire us to feed the hungry, to love a child, to provide comfort and medicine to the sick, to clothe those whose garments are threadbare, and to offer hope and our Lord's word to all who need respite. Pray for us, to our beloved God, that we may commit ourselves selflessly to do the same charitable act that you did all your life, and intercede with him that we may have the favor of his guidance and strength and love upon this important and meaningful work. Amen. Let us stand. Sorry. Let us kneel. Let us stand. A happy feast day to all of you. Yeah. And Lama Ta Jumpa, Mr. Lim Bung Heng and Mrs. Florence Lim. Huh? Lama Ta Jumpa. Nice to see you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Our, and our hope, to you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we stand up outside, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us, and after this exile, show us the blessed fruit of your womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O oh, sweet Virgin Mary. You're the saint for all seasons, you're the man for the reasons. We have lost sight of God 